like to, uh, yeah. like to first of all introduce Fatu. Um, Fatu came to TRP back in September of 2015, so just uh, fairly recently celebrated that first year with us. Um, and so um, rather than to step on anything that she's going to tell you, I'm going to let her tell you. So Fatu, if you're ready, go ahead and take it away. And if we could um, uh, stop all the sidebars and everything and give the attention to Fatu, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. So for, for those who are not familiar with Fatu, in this presentation before, I'm just going to do an introduction of how I got started with Idea International. Um, I came here many years ago, and uh, when I left my country, my home country, Mali, West Africa, uh, things were good. I grew up in a very good condition. I had a very happy childhood. But after staying here for 17 years, when I returned back home, I found out that things have changed. Our families were struggling to feed themselves, and girls were being pushed out of school, and they were getting into trouble, and finding themselves in, in the legal issues and stuff. So a friend of mine who was a commander in chief in the police department um, took my hand and uh, showed me a place where those girls were being held. And there were 20 and under. They had babies, and their, their family had already pushed them out of the family because they, didn't, they did not want them to have babies and bring more charge to them. And so a non-profit organization took on those girls, and they, it was helping the girls. And they wanted me to step in and help out also. So I took a brochure of that non-profit and came here. Then I went from door to door, from business to business, trying to get some help. And people didn't trust me, so I decided that maybe the best way to actually help is create this nonprofit, which is social legally and actually work on this full time. That's how I got international got started. Oh. So I'm just going to tell the story. My uh, the things that I I have experienced, but uh, I have witnessed. So let's um, take you through my shoes a little bit about what keeps me going, uh, what keeps me going, uh, the unfair things that happened back in time that I can solve. With. So I feel like until we empower women, until we enable women to, have, to be able to, to have a financial prosperity and take healthy decisions and be safe, we're not going to be happy. It's not going to be a happy world. And children are going to suffer. Because when women suffer, the first, part, uh, the first people that suffer are the kids that are end of the guardianship of those women. Um, I have about few examples. And I didn't, really, I didn't really know that these were cases of abuse or violence. And I started going to this. So things are making more sense to me now. I'm able to say to recognize these cases as really violent cases. So one of them was a woman who left the village to come live in the capital city, and she got pregnant. When she got pregnant, she, she was really afraid of the people dealing with the pregnancy, but she, you know, she kept it and she had the baby. But then after having the baby, she was still happy. She was still happy. Uh, was still afraid. But what she did, she got rid of her baby. I mean, she had to kill the baby because she did not want to deal with the society. Uh, because she herself was not safe. So that's a, that's a sad situation. I know the woman, um, but I couldn't do anything then. I was actually very too young to do anything about it. So another case, too, that I know uh, is, um, you know, a girl who was pushed to be male by her father. And again, I was too young to intervene. I didn't even know what was happening exactly until now that I'm able to connect with that. So that girl was married, and a few years later, maybe two, three, you know, she was also assassinated by her husband's family, uh, by abuse and different things. And the third one is something that I actually witnessed. I was maybe eighth grade, and this was a girl that her father really 
we hit her, beat her because she went out at night to just have fun with her friends. But the father, father, this, this is not normal. Uh, she should stay home as a woman. So a few months later, she too died. So there was a lot of violence against women. And I believe that when I feel about forgiveness, uh, a struggle each time, because how can you forgive injustice? Now to me, the best way to forgive injustice, the way I'm dealing with it, is to create a situation that would allow the people who are being abused to stand up for themselves. That way, you know, preventing injustice. So that's what I'm doing. And I'd like to take the opportunity to thank you because you all are participating to that, you know, um, empowering the prevention of that violence that's taking place. Last year, you supported IDEA, and you also went out of your way individually to give money. All of you did. You know, Brent, Jim, Mike, you know, Rob, Kevin, Robin, <laughs> Kate, everybody came. Barbie. So I feel like these things that are here today, your, this is where your money went to train the women so that they can produce something to be financially independent, so that they can take decisions and be safe. So the iron models, please come here and show what you're wearing to the people. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> We have designed a low-maintenance, solar-powered well pump and a modifiable irrigation system to generate a consistent supply of water. This pump will move water throughout the day into a water storage tower. A well will be drilled using local contractors and suppliers to an approximate depth of 263 feet below grade. 
AWARE, our industry partner, provided us international weather modeling and regional climate data. This will provide information to the Malian women farmers on when to plant, water, and harvest crops. Ultimately, this will increase crop yields and maximize profits. We are providing a sustainable agricultural model, ensuring soil viability through crop rotation and composting organic matter. Our goal is that the women farmers sustain maximum crop yields for generic food production while gaining enough time to attend school and grow their local economies. We used a drone assembled by our local partner to collect the longitude and latitude data for our farm in San Ancaroba. We plotted the coordinates to generate an image using Google Earth. We then brought in engineers with specialized sensing equipment to check if water was available underground. The readings show water at approximately 263 feet under our farmland. Our hope is that this water will be pumped out to feed our proposed modifiable drip irrigation system and generate a consistent supply of water to our crops 12 months a year. We are ready to drill. We need your help to make this a reality. Our present goal is to raise $25,000 to hire drillers to drill one well, a construction crew to build a drip irrigation system, and a team of trainers to train the locals in well construction, maintenance, and ongoing water testing to ensure a safe water supply. This is a well plan that is scalable and practical for locations where resources are limited, but longevity is critical. This new well would support the farm's agricultural water needs. Will you help us to bring water to San Ancaroba? So is, is the fund, the $25,000 fund, uh, is that an ongoing initiative right now, and how far away are you in that? You, right now, after we put so much money in the jewelries and the personal stuff, we'll be halfway down. Once we're, we're done selling all of these things, we'll be halfway down with uh, that. So is your intention then uh, to make the, um, <coughs> the items that you're bringing in for sale, an ongoing part of the process? Mm -hmm. Okay. And so you'll take funds from this to restock, and then whatever's left in the way profits goes into the well fund. Is that how you're doing it? Yep. Yeah. So whatever we raise for this, we'll save part of that money and then reinvest the rest of the money, get more items, sell again, and we we'll able to have enough money to get the well good. So are you, are you collecting emails from people that are donating or buying your, your goods so that you can come back? and say, look, we're at this level, you know, would you like to give more or buy something more? We're, we're, we just started this, we just created three stores, uh, or maybe two, Shopify and eBay. Um, yes, we will be collecting emails so that we can update people. Mm -hmm. But I, I was thinking um, that we, I get really concerned about asking for people who have already donated to donate for donate more than it makes me uncomfortable. So I was thinking that, <laughs> that uh, we're going to have a different approach, meaning 
I was one of the, this year, invite people who have donated everybody to just cook and listen to the Mali music for free and eat and just have a brainstorming about how, update them about what was done and together what, they, if they can have some ideas about how can we move forward as well to asking them. I, I think you, you might keep, that might keep people engaged okay. and just let them know that there's part of the process and look how close we are. Mm -hmm. And you might get people that want to say, I'd like to, I'd love to get you over that, okay. the goal. Great. You know, I, I think you sh really should keep okay. them updated. Okay. And, and, we did that. Okay, well, um, if you do have any other questions, see Fatu afterwards. But thank you, Fatu. Um, <laughs>